Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. And today, we have a story for you from our slash cheating stories. Op shared his experience of how he found out his girlfriend of three and a half years was cheating on him. The post includes a detailed account of his relationship with her, and the events leading up to the discovery of her infidelity. From being brainwashed by her friend to making excuses for her behavior, the writer takes us through his journey of discovering the truth and ultimately moving on. How I found out my ex-girlfriend was cheating on me. So after a couple of years, I am telling y'all this story of mine and also giving you advice. This is a lengthy story, but worth the time. In 2017, I met my ex-girlfriend while I was in a park with some friends, and she was also with us. She was at the time, a solid 8 out of 10, friendly, always smiling, and nobody would even guess she would change her behavior so fast after I started dating her. Let's call her, Mrs. V.I. was 19 years old, and she was 18 years old. To give some of the backstory, I was with her for three and a half years, and most of the time. It was okay. But back to the story. It was December of 2018. She told me she's not feeling good in a relationship and wants a pause. I was thinking, why does she need a pause after we had a pretty good relationship? We drove to a lot of places around our country. Spent quite a lot of time together. I was even willing to help her mother with some problems back then and had a really good relationship with her mom and younger sister that she had. I'm going to get a lot of hate after this part. But it's important part of the story. In January 2019, not even two weeks after she wanted to spend more time with family, blah blah blah, I found out she was seeing another guy. I was, in that time, not so wealthy, and also I had 80 kilograms or so. That guy was wealthier, and also looked like an athlete and gym person. Later that week, I found this news. Friend told me it was intentionally done by her friend. She brainwashed Mrs. V, that I was an idiot, a loser, and complete mess. Not to mention I was earning a good buck, not six figures, but enough for being stress-free. When I confronted her about that, she gave me pretty much obvious and old, but we had a pause and we were separated and blah blah. You get it. She told me she wasn't sleeping with him, or she didn't do anything intimate what also many people told me. So I forgive basically complete part of this time and moved on. Months went by and she changed her behavior towards me rapidly, and it got worse month by month. I also got some loans for crap I was giving her, like mobile phone, laptop, used car, complete repair for that car, etc. I don't know why I did that, but guess it was blind love. In 2020, things got really serious. And to be honest, pretty bad. In May of 2020, we agreed to go over the vacation. So I paid basically the whole vacation, and she insisted that her mom and sister will go with us. I had no more problem because I had a good relationship with them. After that vacation, she was starting to distance from me, from my family, and from our time together. In November of 2020, I got texts from her. Literally gibberish like a whole bunch of random letters and so on. After some time, she told me she's completely wasted at some friend's house and she needs to go home ASAP. So I've got my car, drove to the place she described, but halfway. I got a call from her phone. I picked it up, and I was talking with her friend. She told me, don't go here because there's a man who wants to beat the crap out of you. Didn't understand why, but she also told me Mrs. V was talking about how abusive I was 30 minutes earlier, and I forced her to go home. None of that was true. I arrived at that place and instead of getting me smashed over the floor, I was welcomed by the same guy who wanted to sweep the floor with me. I've picked her up, and when I was arriving to her flat, she told me an alcoholic gibberish that I wish I was single to screw guys and have fun with curls. I asked what? And got only nothing. I'm drunk. I've told her what happened the day after, and she burst into tears. She said she loves me. She didn't want to be like that, etc. Really cheap excuses. Lately in December, she started partying heavily. My friends told me that she was seen with Mr. D. 
So they invited me to one party she was at, also with Mr. D. Nothing was really Seuss. She had a good time with friends, and he was there too, but nothing happened. That night, I snapped into investigate mode because something was telling me something's off. We had our locations connected, so I pretty much knew where she was. For the whole three years, she didn't turn her position off, but that night, she did. Two days after, she called me. She goes to her mom's new place, and we will not be seeing each other for two days. Here comes the fun and most effed up thing. Later that day, my friend called me. He saw her car standing on the street in the town, and he wanted to say hello because I was sitting in the passenger seat. I was ill and lying in my bed the whole day. Also, that town wasn't anywhere near her mom's place. I've tried to call her, but her phone was dead, or as she told me so, then my instincts kicked in full time. I did some really good research where Mr. D lives, asked her mom how often she is with her, and also asked her about the night she was supposed to be with her. As I say, puzzle was assembled pretty fast, but it had no concrete evidence she was cheating. We have a hill above my old place where we were frequently driving to stare at the city. It was January of 2021. I had no sleep, so I've looked at the location map. She had not turned her phone off, so I had a solid evidence. She was on the same hill above my old place. I woke up my neighbor and told him to get in the effing car she will not recognize your car, and we drive there ASAP. I explained to him why we were driving there, and I saw her giving Mr. D a BJ in the same car I paid with a pretty high loan. Then when she noticed someone was passing them, she turned her phone off for a while, and then on. She called me that she thinks I was on the hill I told her, sure I was, and guess what I saw. I told her that if she doesn't want me to tell everyone that she is an effing cheater, she better be showing at my old place ASAP. What broke me completely was she arrived 10 minutes after I confronted her about that, with Mr. D inside of the car. He didn't know she had a boyfriend, and also she told him that she bought the car by herself, and she broke up with me because I wasn't providing her anything. What did be so crap? I told myself. I was seriously angry. She told me. It's not how it looks like. But as you can imagine, I wasn't buying it at all. In the end, she told me she'd screwed around 20 men through the whole relationship. Also, one on that vacation I paid while I was asleep. Her excuse was. You were sleeping and not paying any attention to me, so I went into the city and screwed the first guy the first met. From being a victim, to being a strict B in 10 minutes. Not to mention she was mentally and verbally abusing me the whole time we were together, made scenes, told her friends I was whacking her, etc. Not really visible, but she was doing a lot of crazy crap around her friends and also in private. After this, was diagnosed with depression and also got tested for STDs. Luckily, I had only severe depression. Now, I have a new girlfriend. We are living in Austria. I've started a new life, unfortunately, with crippling debt and severe mental issues. The point is never ever underestimate your gut and bad feeling. Also, I will never ever trust any woman again. I have a great relationship now, but I have a huge trust issues that never fade away. It's difficult to hear about the pain of discovering your ex-girlfriend's infidelity. But thank you for sharing your experience and insights op. It takes courage to open up and share such a personal story. It's unfortunate that your ex-girlfriend betrayed your trust, but it sounds like you've learned some valuable lessons from the experience. Your story serves as a reminder to always trust her instincts and to not ignore red flags and relationships. It's also a reminder that sometimes we give too much of ourselves to people who don't deserve it and that it's important to recognize our own self-worth and set boundaries. Ultimately, it's important to remember that healing is a process and that it's okay to take time to recover from such a difficult experience. Keep moving forward and know that there are better things ahead of you. The discovery of the OP's ex-girlfriend cheating on him can be very difficult and emotional experience. It can be challenging to come to terms with the betrayal especially after investing so much time, effort, and emotions into the relationship. It's essential to prioritize self-care, seek support from friends and family.
and take the time to heal and move forward. It's also crucial to learn from the experience and identify any red flags or warning signs to avoid similar situations in the future. In conclusion, we hope this video has helped you gain a deeper understanding of the topic. Remember, knowledge is power, and the more you learn, the more you can grow and develop. We encourage you to continue exploring this topic and others like it, and feel free to share your experiences with us in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Now let's move on to the next story. My husband, 28 male, cheated on, and abandoned me pregnant, 37 female, and is trying to make me feel guilty for not facilitating video calls with our daughter, 9 month old female. I found out my husband had been cheating on me last Valentine's Day. When I was at 6 months pregnant. He's in the Navy and was in training in Florida. I flew out to spend the week with him, and he was acting weird. I asked to see his phone, and he tried to tell me it wasn't healthy. That his therapist told him that we shouldn't do that. Well, I've never done that to him, but he had admitted to doing it to me and then tried to accuse me cheating, even though he found absolutely no evidence that I ever cheated. He brought up an old text thread he saw from a guy that I'd met in a bar while out with girlfriends about one week after we made a relationship official. But we still weren't engaged or married. I was confused because I had no memory of this and had to dig back in my text to find what he was talking about. The text exchange was over and done in one day, and we never talked again. The content of the exchange consisted of talking about podcasts, my girlfriend's dating woes, and then I mentioned what an amazing boyfriend I had and was thankful not to be having the same problems as my friends. I never cheated on him or even came close. Anyway, password a few months. And here we are in the Airbnb, and I'm asking for the phone. I tell him that he looked at mine behind my back, plus GPS tracking me without my knowledge for months before I found out. And I don't care what the therapist says. I deserve to know the truth. He hands me the phone and then tries to yank it back before I see anything. I take off and lock myself in the bathroom. I start seeing instant messages, Snapchat messages to other women. He tried to get in the bathroom the whole time. I'm not that strong and can't continue holding it back, so I put the phone on my pants and opened the door. I tell him I don't have the phone, and he can look for it in the bathroom. While he's looking, I take off running in the middle of the night in the neighborhood. I don't know six months pregnant and devastated. He was DMing over 20 different women, telling them how beautiful they were, etc. I found save snaps where he exchanged addresses with some girl as well as sending her a video of himself masturbating and a bunch of other pics of him shirtless, post yoga pod for you, etc., text attached. There was a thread with another girl on snap of them taking photos together at a bar with a bunch of heart emojis over the pic. They weren't kissing or anything, and I didn't see sexual stuff or addresses exchanged here, but it still made me question if this was just another chick he was hooking up with while I was pregnant alone trying to prepare for our daughter across the country. He drove back to his barracks to remotely wipe his phone while I was still finding more evidence of his infidelity. Obviously, I was devastated and upset, but he'd been pulling away for a while before this happened. So I'd had my suspicions up to that point and I had already really been struggling emotionally dealing with that. Not to mention, I'd already have a PSD diagnosis from long-term abuse, which I'm not getting into the details of. But as soon as we got married, he told me I had to give him details about the abuse that I went through because I was his wife now. I joked that if that was the case, then we could get a divorce. Over some months, he wouldn't let this go and would interrogate me about details until he was screaming and I was crying. At this point, I was already in my second trimester with my daughter and I caved and gave him some details hoping that would be the end of it. It was not. If any of you are familiar CPTSD, forcing someone to disclose details against their will, can set your recovery back a ton. So I started having nightmares again. Migraines, intense anxiety, etc. One got so bad that I had to go to the ER because I was throwing up and urinating on myself from the pain of the migraine. I don't have any family nearby or parents, really, source of my PTSD. So I called the next person who I felt safe with to take me to the that happened to be my ex of four years. 
My husband knows about this friendship and was uncomfortable with it at first, but seemed to get over it when I explained that our relationship was basically sexless and we parted amicably because I wanted kids and he'd had three already with tubes tied. He and his family kind of adopted me because of the situation with my family, plus, I helped him raise two teenagers. His oldest was in college out of state by this point. Fast forward again. My daughter is nine months old in a couple of days. Our final divorce hearing is this Friday. He lost legal custody in the last hearing. He didn't show up, but his lawyer did, and he got a liberal step-up plan for visitation. He's now stationed in Connecticut, and I am in California. So it's going to be tough to exercise visitation. I went through periods of intense anger towards him and it told him he couldn't see his daughter without a court order, although I took that back and invited him to visit her for the first Christmas. So he hasn't been back to see her since she was born. I should also mention that he told me the Navy was requiring a paternity test for our daughter since we weren't going to be together anymore. He told me this less than 48 hours after I gave birth. I went into an emotional tailspin after he told me that. The nurses almost wanted to keep me in a postpartum recovery for an extra day. I sent an angry email regarding the matter to his chief and told the husband to stay away from us until he got his paternity results. He kept messaging and telling me that he was in California to visit her. He had taken paternity leave to visit her, and he was 99.9% .9 sure she was his, but he just wanted to be sure. I started feeling guilty because I know without a doubt that he's her father so I let him visit. Things were going well until my daughter was 11 days old, and he decided to go out partying with his friends in town because they wanted to celebrate him becoming a father. I wouldn't have known about it, but I tried to call and text him to say goodnight to baby since he was staying at a friend's and not with us at night, and he took about three hours to respond. I was pissed. I had already felt abandoned, not just me, but also our daughter and he had the audacity to go out partying to celebrate becoming a father when he wasn't even going to be there to help us. Anyway, I gave him a little hell for it, and he came back to visit a couple of days later before he came. I told him no more showering at my place or taking care of personal hygiene. He was doing this before. If he's coming over, he's there to help and spend time with a baby and that's it. Well, he was giving me attitude and complaining when he came over. So I asked him why he thought everything would be hunky-dory after what he put me through. The lies, the cheating, the verbal emotional abuse. He got defensive and started telling me my family told him I'd be an unfit mother. He kept repeating it when he saw how upset it made me with my daughter, still in my chest from breastfeeding. I had a pelvic problem during the latter half of my pregnancy was still having difficulty walking or getting up from a seated or laying position. My helplessness infuriated me even more. I told him to get out of my house, so after having to repeat several times and raise my voice, he left, but also forgot his wallet, which I didn't realize at the time. I blocked him on my phone immediately after he left, so he had his friends call and text me about it, which also upset me further. I told him to F off, and if he came back to the house, I'd be calling the police on him. I didn't need the man that abandoned and cheated on me pregnant causing me further stress with my newborn. I needed tranquility and peace. I figured I'd go drop his wallet off at the base later. Didn't need or deserve an explanation from me. So I went to my apartment that day, which he knew about, and drove to drop it off at the base after I get home, and my roommate informs me that husband sent police to my house to pick up the wallet and claim that I pretended to not be home. Later on that day, Get a call from CPS claiming general neglect of my newborn infant less than two weeks old. CPS opens a case on me. I was again devastated. Nothing ended up happening, and a lawyer advised me not to allow them access to my home without a court order, but it was awful just to have to talk to them about this and to be accused of neglecting my baby that I dedicated every waking and barely sleeping moment to. Needless to say, I haven't been thrilled about the prospect of co-parenting with this guy but he's guilt-tripping me for not doing video calls, sending photos, etc., and telling him he couldn't visit for Thanksgiving, even though I told him he could visit her for her first Christmas, and I offered to help him finance the trip. 
He decided to take his limited resources and leave days to vacation with his friends and family for two weeks in Florida and blamed me for not wanting to come until he gets a court order. He had previously stated he couldn't come because of money, places to say, etc. I don't know what to do. I don't trust him alone with the baby. Doing calls and sending pics feels so forced and is bad for me emotionally. I've tried it. I want to stop being snarky with him but I'm still so mad and the fact that he hadn't really apologized for everything he put me through has me on edge. There's so much more to the story, but I think this post has gone on long enough for now. Edit. Court was today for the paternity hearing. He tried to pay me as a complete whore, which is fine. The judge left a visitation order stand as they are even though apparently, fraternity has not been established in the court's mind. The reasoning was that we never lived together. You guys, I can't even begin to describe how horrible this man has been to me. The stuff he said in court was beyond all comprehension. I chose not to waste the court's time with a lengthy rebuttal of all the lies and half-truths he presented. Which should have paternity results in a month. I guess I'm just kind of shocked how long a judge let him blow the aid with utter nonsense that didn't even have anything to do with paternity. He said that his family was also waiting for paternity results. Weird. He'd been giving all these guilt trips about his family not being able to see her, yet they have my contact information. This is the first time I've heard anything about his family also questioning paternity. His mom and sisters were at my baby shower which took place after I found out about his cheating. Jesus, I'm upset right now. If there was ever a person with two faces, this guy would be the poster child. I responded to almost everyone's comments in question, giving more backstory and reasoning for my stance. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to read all of this and offer thoughtful responses and advice. Speaking of thoughtful responses and advice, Let's read what Far Boot 5639 has to say. Sadly, many of his actions leading up to your discovery are common red flags. One that always stands out is them accusing us of cheating despite no evidence of prior history. Sounds like he made your life a little messy there for a bit. But if someone who is in your shoes now also, I wish you luck. It sounds like a very difficult and complicated situation for this op. It is understandable that she would be upset and angry at her husband for cheating on her and abandoning her while pregnant. Additionally, it is not fair for him to try to make her feel guilty for not facilitating video calls with her daughter, especially given his behavior in the past. It is ultimately up to the op to decide whether or not to allow video calls, and she should not be made to feel guilty for whatever decision she makes. The best thing to do in this situation would be to prioritize the well-being and safety of yourself and your child. It's understandable to feel conflicted and hurt by your husband's actions, but it's important to focus on what is best for you and your child. It may be helpful to speak with a therapist or a trusted friend or family member to process your emotions and come up with a plan for county parenting and visitation that works for you and your child. It's important to set boundaries and establish clear communication with your ex-husband regarding visitation and co-parenting. Additionally, it may be helpful to seek legal advice from a family law attorney to ensure that your rights and the rights of your child are protected during the divorce process. It's important to prioritize your own well-being and to take any necessary steps to ensure your safety and the safety of your child. Thanks for tuning in and watching this vid. I hope you enjoyed it and it made you feel good. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos alike. We appreciate your support and love. And we'll keep creating content, hand in glove. So until we meet again, farewell, and I hope to see you soon and to hear your bell. See you next time.